Personal Story segment tonight, reaction to the interview with Leon Panetta. Joining us from Washington, Charles Crad Armour. So how'd I do? You did great. Uh, Panetta did great. I'm afraid Obama did not do very well. Explain. Well, look, Panetta is an icon of the Democratic Party. 20 years, one of the leaders of the party. Everyone knows he's a straight shooter. And you can tell from the tone of his responses to you that he's sympathetic to the president. Uh, but he loves his country, and he feels he has to say the truth. And what he said, the content of what he said, even though the tone was measured and restrained, was utterly devastating. He was basically saying this president cannot lead, he is indecisive, and he is weak. What was so interesting is it wasn't even in the discussion of Iraq or Afghanistan, but if you, and this won't even be reported, but the thing he said about Ukraine, where he just sort of, you know, he laid out what, the, what should be done, what is obvious we have to do to give Ukraine weapons, which we have not done, to redo and reinvigorate the missile defense agreement with Obama has not done, and to be serious about shoring up the defenses of Eastern Europe. And he said this just outright. You said, why doesn't he do it? He had absolutely no answer. Uh, and, and then, you know, you're trying to get into Obama's head or Panetta's understanding of Obama's head, and he doesn't have an answer. And, it, and if you look at it in terms of what's happening in the Middle East, there are two things that come out. It's not just indecisiveness and how tentative Obama is, but it's also how political he is. Remember when Gates, Bob Gates, wrote his book, he talked about how the decision-making about the surge in Afghanistan and then leaving in Afghanistan was essentially dictated by the political types in the White House. And you get the same thing in the Panetta book about Iraq. He knew we had to leave troops in Iraq. It is one of the worst decisions ever made by this president. And you called it a blunder, which of course it is. And the, uh, the answer of how it came about is that it was the political types in the White House who wanted to go into 2012 with no troops left in Iraq so Obama could say, I ended the war in Iraq. Of course, he didn't end the war in Iraq. Petraeus ended the war in Iraq, and then Obama threw away the fruits of victory. But it was the political nature of that that I think is the biggest indictment of Obama, where he put the White House concerns about the political, partisan fortunes of the president above the national security of the country. He, of course, doesn't see it that way, the president, because he said, well, I couldn't predict what would happen, that Maliki would screw it up. Now, on the Benghazi front, I mean, uh, Liam Panetta does not believe that, that the Obama administration purposely misled the country. He rather would believe that they chose Petraeus' talking points over the talking points of the Defense Department and the Pentagon. Do you buy on that? I think it's plausible. There was a fun. You look at the emails that were exchanged just before the Susan Rice appearance on the Sunday shows. There was a lot of political infighting, a, lo a lot of blame shifting. Remember the memo that said this building, meaning the State Department, doesn't like the uh, talking points as they are now, trying to protect the Secretary of State, trying to protect the Defense Department. So I could understand that. But I do think the major point is this, again, is driven by the White House, by political considerations. You've got uh, two months to go until an election. The meme, the theme of your election campaign is, I killed Osama, and the uh, war against terror Terrorism is waning. essentially won, right? right? The, the tide of war is receding, so you have to construct a fable. And they stuck with that. You could say, well, at the beginning they weren't sure, fine. But they stuck with that for days and days. Okay. Charles Ryder, everybody, and one footnote. His book, Things That Matter, has now sold more than one million copies. Congratulations to Charles.